the BGICC meeting uh, is in a country where there are lots of young women having breast cancer. And like where I work, where the majority of women are postmenopausal. So one of the key questions for a woman who has breast cancer, and any woman with any cancer anyway, is, oh, if I haven't had kids, will I have kids? If I want to have more kids, can I have more kids? So that's the question that I was asked to address. Uh, fortunately, uh, I have been working very closely with Professor uh, Fedro Pectatori, who is a leader in this field. So uh, I didn't need to uh, do a uh, major revision of uh, the field, as he had done it just a few months ago, and he gave me his slides. But what happened uh, in uh, December was that we had the San Antonio meeting, and in San Antonio there was uh, the uh, presentation of the study of Anne Partridge and colleagues that uh, gives us a good guidance on the realities of uh, pregnancy in endocrine uh, uh, responsive uh, breast cancer patients. And uh, this uh, study is quite reassuring. Uh, the data we had until now showed that uh, from all the analysis, uh, yes, there is a lesser chance of getting pregnant for many reasons in women that have uh, some type of uh, approach, uh, chemotherapy or chemo endocrine therapy or endocrine therapy alone. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, there is a chance that they can have a kid. I'm not speaking of those that have put the oocytes aside uh, because of chemotherapy and the fear that they uh, will have no recovery of the production oocytes. But I'm speaking of those that can recover and uh, they are less fertile. The data we had and which is confirmed by the, by the trial of Ann Partridge shown at San Antonio is that there is no major issue. Uh, these women can have uh, uh, children that are perfectly okay. Of course, there are sometimes some issues, but they're not much bigger than in the general population, age matched. And uh, in the endocrine setting, patients that have had the 18 to 30 months, that was the admission criteria to the trial of endocrine manipulation, and then stop the treatment. And usually in premenopausal women, it has been tamoxifen. These women uh, can then look for pregnancy. A certain proportion of them, about, uh, I would say, half, uh, actually uh, become pregnant. And uh, the outcome for the baby, prospectively, is perfectly OK. The risk that these women are having by stopping transitorily, because they resume, 75% did resume the treatment after the pregnancy, uh, is quite minimal. Yes, there are unfortunately some relapses, as highlighted by Professor Nagin Sagir uh, in his question. Uh, but uh, if we look at the survival curves of those patients that stopped transitorily and the study data from uh, studies that address this patient population, there's no indication of in, an increased risk. They have the risk they had, and unfortunately, sometimes they do relapse. Very important, they don't die from the relapse. Uh, we have nowadays lots of treatments for endocrine responsive disease, so they're still there to be with the kid. I think the, the, this study, uh, along with everything that has been uh, worked on until now, uh, will uh, reassure the colleagues that had some questions and doubts about, is it safe, is it not safe, when is it safe? Yes, it is safe. We say that after chemotherapy, usually you could say two years after chemotherapy, there should be absolutely no issue related to the chemotherapy besides the potential fact that they have become unfertile because of the chemo, and then hopefully we can do something about it, or they had oocytes put aside. Uh, and for the endocrine uh, patients, we now know that yes, we can do a window. This was already suggested a little bit later by the uh, uh, so-called St. Gallen, nowadays Vienna meeting on adjuvant breast cancer. It's going to happen again uh, next, this year. 
uh, with uh, less evidence, prospective evidence. Now we have the prospective evidence. Thank <laughs> you.